Hello, my Brood War brothers, and welcome back to another replay cast. I've got for you Iris here in the top left-hand corner versus Action down here in the bottom left. Now, Iris is a player I did not think I would be casting here in 2024, but this is a ladder game from Jan January 29th, 2024. And that's right, Iris is back. This man was huge in the Kespa era. Never quite reached the levels of success as a Jadong or a Flash, but he was in the mix always as a contender. And in the modern era, Africa TV, Star League era, he managed to make it into the group stages once or twice. And now he's grinding up the ladder. He has a very fair score on battle.net. And he's managed to run into action here down in the bottom left. If you saw him in the wildcard qualifier, there were some great games there. Some great ZVZs especially. But here we're looking at ZVT. We'll see where action is at in this matchup. As of this game it kicks off, Iris gonna start it with a wall in at the front. What is gonna be his game plan here? Is he gonna pull out some mech build? I don't think so. We don't have a gas just yet. It appears to me to be one of our more modern styles. And that's going to be the very quick wall in here with the single barracks into expansion. He's actually left a hole here, I think. There's a hole on the left of this supply depot. I believe this is intentional. Because it's very easy, actually, to put this one hex over. You could actually put this two hexes over and it would still be fine, but... It feels to me like Iris has left himself the option to actually go out on the map with his Marines. You can see that Marine slipping through there. If you have the Supply Depot just one hex up here, and this barracks one hex to the left, you can make this a full wall, and I believe the Marine will still pop out on the right side. That's interesting. He's lifting that off in order to bring that SCV back in where he really does not need to have an interesting start here to this game. Feels like Iris not completely at home yet in Brood War. I myself took some time off recently. I took like a couple of weeks off of ladder. And when I came back, things were very rough. I played against Semi. Uh, I believe it was like three or four games in a row and got absolutely rocked. I played against uh, Ace, shout out to him. Ended up getting very, very frustrated, but that's just the way it is in Brood War. If you take any amount of time off, it really feels rough coming back to it. And look at that, a factory here from Iris. So he is gonna go for some sort of funky play here. Potential of going into mech. Now, I don't remember if Iris was a real mech player back in the day, but something, I don't know. I want to say that he was. I want to say that the, he did enjoy playing some mech, but I really can't remember, guys. Sorry, my memory is terrible. It really astounds me, some of these casters. Like, uh, I think Tasteless is one of the good examples of a guy who just... Really does remember a lot about the Kespa era. Of course, he was there for a lot of it, so that does give him an advantage. But some of my other friends, like Ozzy, seem to know just kind of an outstanding amount of information about Brood War and the history of the game. That's not my speciality. My speciality is casting and keeping up with the latest meta. That is what I like to do. That's why I am here. I enjoy seeing what is changing, what the new strategies are going to be, the latest 
uh, pro strats are going to be. That's where I get my kicks. And look at this. We're going into, I believe, a quick Valkyrie with barracks coming up now. So it is not going to be any sort of mech play here from Iris. This is a very modern style. Something that I would imagine a player like Light pulling out. And when he's not doing just very like super standard uh, three to four racks play. You can catch him playing some crazy Valkyrie style like this. And it is very, very strong. Now, if there was a machine shop on here, I'd actually say it's more of a fantasy build. But we're not going for tanks here. It appears like we're just going to go for some Valkyries in order to push away these Mutas. And then we're going to be switching things up. Going into a more normal uh, probably a science vessel play here now coming through with these mutas deal a little damage here to these marines taking the fight here with the marines before the critical mass is there and i think that this is going very well for action he does take two volleys from that initial valkyrie but the amount of early marines he's killed off now is actually quite substantial we have armor here on the way base in the bottom left and it's going to take some time for marines to gather up once again and in that time action going to be producing a lot of drones here look at all the drones that are popping out from his natural he did go for a 2.5 hatch this game has that base down the bottom right going to be saturating that very very quickly we do not have a second gas here just yet and we're struggling to put together a decent sized marine medic force to start to move out on the map with. Whereas Lurker Aspect already on the way here. Do we have Hydras moving out on the map? No, we do not. Just a good clump of mutas. Actually, not as sizable a clump of mutas as I expected. Seems like we're going to be transferring or transitioning away from that tag here very very quickly makes sense when your opponent has gone for valkyrie but i think this has been done very well by action you know he dove in and killed a lot of the marines which kind of takes away the pushing power of our Terran player and once that pushing power is gone then the transition can happen very very easily we don't need to keep building mutas in order to hold back the marines because the marines are just not there and even though we do have that overwhelming Valkyrie pressure, even though we have the Valkyrie out here to kind of sweep away the Mutas, it doesn't really do too much for us because that ground force is not there to back it up anymore. Now, action here. He's got the Lurkers on high ground. Looks like he just picked off a Marine. He sees the tank as well. This is going to be a push play here from iris and iris starting vehicle weapon upgrade is that going to be for a mech transition i think it's relatively likely and there we go two factories come down so this is interesting guys this is a style that we don't get to see that often but a lot of you guys love this way of playing terran going into like a marine focused mid game it's, it's something that was very popular right at the return of remastered when remastered was first released we were doing a lot of actually five racks played getting a lot of pressure out on the map and then switching into mech but players have since kind of switched that up they've gone into these valkyrie early plays quick valkyrie plays which i mean that gives you the armory already it allows you to sweep the map of the mutas, like force the Zerg into a transition. And in that time that they're transitioning, then you can start to get your factories out. You can start to lay mines all around the map and make it very, very difficult for the Zerg player to aggress upon you while you're transi transitioning into the tanks. We don't have tanks on the way here just yet. Still researching ion thrusters, trying to get that speed for the vultures out and i never really noticed that before actually look at that look at the tailpipe on the end of that i guess that's where the ion thruster goes does it change when the upgrade uh pops in i don't know kind of cool with the the red color here 
And look at that. You can actually see the face of the vulture there. It's got some pretty sweet sunglasses on, actually. I like the look of that. Red is a good color on Terran, although it does not show plagues very easily. And if we do have some plagues coming up, I will change the color. Oh, great mine connection there. This is exactly what these mines are meant to do. Just make it super hard for the Zerg player to actually push up on you. We've got the Defiler Mound down here, taking another base right now on this high ground. Retro. Not a lot of bases on this map. But Ira's going to go ahead and start to take some of them. All of the Vulture's mines have been laid, so might as well go across the map. Try to get some scouting information here. He's going to see that 6 o'clock has not been taken. We haven't even taken our fourth base here just yet uh, for action. But he could start to try and take that now. As with the transition, you're not going to have pressure similar to what you have if you're going for you know, full-on marine play. With that bio ball, you're, you're going to be able to slow down the Zerg player from taking that fourth. But in this case, yeah, he could kind of take that for free now. There's not really a whole lot that Iris can do about that. Laying some more mines out here. Looks like he's going to catch this group of lings. Maybe not. Okay, with that mine, looks like he will catch that. And are we going to be going into Ultra here? There it is, Ultralist Cavern on the way. This is not how I like to play against Mech personally, but if you are really far ahead, it can be a good way to play. Uh, Ultra is very, very mobile, but it does not deal well with mines. If you can avoid the tanks and keep attacking the, the Terran player over and over again, you can start to take really good trades. But if you don't do that properly, you're going to be in a lot of trouble now. Um, Scourge is going to come through here. That was funny, irradiating some of these lurkers that were already very low. There's only one lurker left here, and tanks are getting set up. But we do have to start to move forward pretty darn soon here as Iris. Otherwise, we're going to find ourselves in a lot of trouble. As you can see, action adding on more and more hatcheries. And his defilers have now reached the front. Plague is on the way. Consume is done. So, with Consume being done, and we can start to push forward here onto some of these bases, and now it's going to be very hard to stop a Defiler Lurker push towards any of these bases. Although, there are a few tanks here and there. There are some mines as well. And look at that. He did get the Defiler. I think I just barely missed that. But I might have to picture and picture it just so that we can see how he was able to pick off that Defiler. Very important that he did manage to get that, though, before we could start to push up onto this base. And now with the Vultures running around here, we're going to see this fifth base coming up. We might be able to get some drone damage here, although we're not going to head that direction. So I guess we're going to allow that to go on for now. Iris starting to move over here towards the center left. Can he get up onto this high ground? When If there's defilers nearby, it's going to be very, very difficult. Hank sieging up here on low ground, stretching himself out a little bit thin. There's not too much here on the right-hand side. Looks like he's going to try and break up here, bringing up these vultures. Now with two attack damage. Let's see how many upgrades are done for... The Zerg player plus two is done. And we will have Ultras popping out here pretty soon. What is this called? Anabolic Synthesis. That's a great name for an upgrade. Looks like some mines are going to connect on some of these lurkers. And he does get that one kill. Very nicely done. Marines are coming down here. But the Marines are now kind of a precious resource. We don't want to be throwing them away for free. It can be very useful at defending against these Mutilists. Because now we don't, like, we don't have any Goliaths out right now. We have these uh, couple of Valkyries, but we do need to protect them. Not a good job of protecting right there. Unfortunately, that Valkyrie will go down to the two Scourge. That's what I was talking about. Having those Marines is valuable now. Because we can protect our Valkyries, and our Valkyries can deter 
the Mutas from becoming a big threat. 11 Ultras on the way here. Now, what Action does with this first round of Ultras is probably going to translate either into a great position here for Action, or it could end up leaving him in a bad position in this game. So it will kind of set the pace for the rest of this game. 14 Ultralis about to pop out here. Getting some great damage down to the 6 o'clock. Picking off a lot of drones. It's exactly what you want to be doing here as the Terran player in this situation. Uh, and more or less laying out mines as well. It's a little bit unfortunate we haven't been able to move out this direction. In order to get mines out on the map on mass to deal with the Ultras. Because this these Ultras are going to be a problem. And the more mines there are available... The more difficult it is going to be, it's going to be to bring them to bear. To actually do something with those ultras will be more and more difficult. Now, I'd love to see a queen get built so that we can deal with this uh, this command center here. The mutas are going to come up. I don't think they can kill this. But they should be able to deal some damage to it. Now we're going to run in with the ultra. Ooh, I don't think I really like this too much. Oh, great mind connection there. But look at how many ultras just died running in against mines here he's gonna pull a bunch of mines forward but look at we've still got plenty of tanks and all the ultras have just died so let's zoom back a little bit and just think about this <laughs> from the perspective of action we turned 14 ultras into four ultras in a matter of a few seconds and how many tanks did we kill like five that's, um, I don't think that's good value for money there, Action. But Action going to hit the right-hand side. Now he's going to try and get through this. Depot wall is going to be a bit of a pain for him, though. If we do get some SEVs repairing this, he could save it. But it looks like he won't. Mine going to connect there as well. Some Goliaths are now out on the field. More Ultras coming up here. He does want to get in and try to break this base. Iris, not really mining with the most SCVs at this location. I guess maybe transferring over here. No, where are all his SCVs? He's at 66, but most of them must be in the main and natural. Looks like a, an army making its way over here. A lot of mine connections going off. A lot of these uh, ultras are very, very weakened after those mines, and looks like he's cleared up 12 o'clock now. The Ultra going to be picked off here. Plus three is done. So the tanks are going to be doing huge damage versus these Ultras now. You can see they're not making very much progress. But now that the mines have been cleared, we might be able to get up this ramp. Although there are a few more tanks. And a D-Matrix here is going to help out a whole lot to keep this tank alive. From the splash damage, especially from the tanks over there on the top side. This is not looking good. We still don't have speed for these uh, overlords or drop. So we're very far away from getting that drop upgrade. That is unfortunate, but he's still going to keep hitting this right-hand side, trying to find a way to break through here. Iris rotating, getting his forces back into position. If he sets up a bunch of tanks right there, it's going to be near impossible to break this place. Mo rotating around again. He's going to try and catch some of the tanks transferring. There's not any mines over here. A big misstep here from Iris, who's now even on supply with Action. Action, going to zoom out. Big picture here. Action taking this fight on the high ground while trading with these lings here on the low ground. Looks like he will be able to push away these SCVs for now. This base over here has not been checked by Iris just yet. And I was going to have to make a run for it here with his vessels. Might end up losing one of those. He does. This base has been reclaimed here by the Zerg. Dropping down just now to two bases for the Terran. Is a lot more difficult for him to take on this fight now. And GG, he taps out. So, actually, able to take this one down here with just pure ultra. Now, it's not something that I would ever recommend doing as a Zerg player going up against mech is just going pure ultra with no overload upgrades at all. You can see he was starting to think about transitioning into Queens. One Queen was being built, I guess. Maybe that was to infest the command center, but he threw away a lot of ultras in that first wave of attack. 
I think the uh, real clincher, though, was Action having so much gas to work with. He had so many bases up and running with 77 workers. And this many hatches, he was really able to produce an outstanding number of Ultra and Ling in order to overwhelm this mech transition from Iris. It's not very often that you see, especially on a map like this, where you only have to defend three different locations. Defend here, this ramp, defend here, and defend here. This is a very difficult ramp to get up, as is this with just Ultra and Ling, but Action somehow managing to do it, showing just how good he is looking here in 2024, how ready he is to fight in the ASL. Really looking forward to watching him. I wonder if we'll see more from Iris in the future. I'll keep an eye on him for you guys and see if there's any other games he plays worth watching. And until then, I'll see you in the next video.